Hello, my name is Nate Foster. I'm a computer science professor at Cornell University and a research engineer at Barefoot Networks, an Intel company. Today I'm going to tell you some ideas about how eBPF and P4 can work better together. On the face of it, eBPF and P4 might appear to have little in common. eBPF is a low-level language organized around general-purpose constructs like registers and bytecode instructions, whereas P4 is a domain-specific language based on custom constructs like header types and pipelines of match action tables. But despite these differences, I'd argue that all of us in the eBPF and P4 communities are really fellow travelers on a common path. Our shared and somewhat revolutionary goal is to invert who's in charge of the infrastructure, whether it's the Linux kernel or the network fabric, and make it something that can be programmed by ordinary developers. The natural endpoint of this revolution is an end-to-end -end programmable platform where every component on the full path from the application at one endpoint all the way over to the other side is something that we can program directly in software. And the ramifications of such an architecture is something we're just starting to explore. You can imagine migrating part of the networking stack to a smart NIC or a programmable switch, or combining application level observability, something the eBPF community is quite familiar with, with network telemetry, something the P4 community works on, to get unprecedented visibility into performance issues. But to get to this vision, it's clear that we need to leverage the strength of both frameworks. Being able to program the individual components by themselves is not enough. And so today I want to look at two pieces of technology, in particular compiler technology, that can help P4 and eBPF work together in a larger system. So the first and perhaps most obvious direction is to compile to P4 to eBPF. So why is this interesting? It might seem rather trivial, in fact, because eBPF is general purpose and P4 is restricted. But there's a growing body of P4 code for standard protocols and for common network functions. And having a path for being able to execute this code in the Linux kernel would be powerful and would have broad appeal. So in fact, there's already a number of projects that are exploring these kinds of compilers. There's a simple eBPF backend that's distributed with the open source P4 compiler. And there's a more sophisticated, fully featured compiler that goes to the eBPF XDP hook. And there's even a new user space PPF compiler that was released just this past year. So I think all this is exciting. Um, and what we need, of course, are applications and use cases to drive these frameworks forward. But there's also some deeper questions like how we can leverage P4's restricted model to enable advanced optimizations, or how we can streamline the task of building these compilers so that every new eBPF hook doesn't require a new effort. Going the other direction, uh, here the challenge is to take a general purpose program, maybe written or compiled with eBPF, and accelerate it using a, uh, a pipeline specified in P4. So uh, there's many ways to do this, um, but the approach that I've been exploring with my group at Cornell is to use just-in-time compilation. And JIT compilation is something that the eBPF community is familiar with, of course, but we think it's a good fit for accelerators too. In particular, by specializing the program to a particular packet or flow, we can do aggressive optimizations, often shrinking and simplifying the program that we need to run, and uh, simplify the task of lowering that program onto the kinds of quirky instruction sets that accelerators support. Now, the open issue with any kind of just-in-time compiler is that there is a kind of fast path, slow path distinction. And in the context of a networking system, you might not be happy if the performance of your system varies greatly depending on whether it's the first packet in a given flow or, or a later packet. And so we need to find ways to smooth out these, uh, these performance uh, discrepancies and make things more predictable. Just to give you a taste of what this looks like, um, we've prototyped this uh, JIT approach in something we call JITNIC. Um, it's based on some Xilinx Alveo U250 uh, FPGAs. Um, what we have is a P4 programmable pipeline that runs at 100 gigs per second. And then uh, we have a compiler in a system uh, that maps incoming traffic uh, onto uh, the, the accelerator while running a residual program uh, to manage state and uh, run the compiler itself. And even on complex applications like a virtualization stack or an in-network cache, the compiler is able to quickly adapt and map the bulk of the processing onto the accelerator. So the graph you see here on the lower right um, shows for our virtualization stack um, a number of statistics, how many flows are being run on the NIC, 
how many flows are being run by the compiler on the coprocessor, and how fast the NIC is being updated. Um, and these results are preliminary, but we think they're promising. Okay, so that's all the time I have. Thanks for listening. Uh, if finding ways for P4 and EVPF to work together sounds interesting, get in touch and let's get to work.